and welcome to Fascinating Phylums. I'm Sir Winston Wallace Wallaby the Fifth, and this is Sir Colonel Prime Minister, uh, Honorary Prime Minister Larry. Right, so today we will be exploring the fascinating phylum of Nematoda, also known as the Roundworms. Because they're round. Yes, they're round, hence the name. Anyways, moving forward, we'll start off the program with an overview of the general characteristics of the nematodes. That we will, and um, then we will... <clears throat> then we'll look at a few specific species of nematodes. Ah, right, brilliant. So, nematodes continue to exhibit bilateral symmetry and complex cephalization, just as the phylum of Platyhelminthes that we covered last week does. Platyhelmi what? Flatworms? Ah, because they're flat. Uh, would, would, would you mind jogging my memory on that cephalization bit? But of course. Cephalization means that the nematodes have the majority of their sensory organs located at one end of their body. Oh, that's quite like the flat chaps we covered last week. Yes, yes it is. Moving on, nematodes also have a hydrostatic skeleton, which gives them a rigid support system. Brilliant, I must concur. Well, in that case, would you care to explain how the hydrostatic skeleton works? Uh, well, hydro means water, and st static is electricity? Not quite, old chap. A hydrostatic skeleton is a fluid-filled cavity within the worm. It works in much the same way as when you fill a hose with water, causing it to become rigid. Right. Like when you fill a hose and let go of it, and it proceeds to flit about, and everything around gets sopping wet. Uh, essentially, yes. Uh, now then, nematodes are the first phylum we have covered that has a complete digestive system. Whoa, 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 whoa. Meaning that they have developed two openings in their digestive tract. One for the intake of food, and one for the expulsion of waste. Well, Mom. Um, uh, 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 this allows the food to travel in one direction through the worm's bodies, which allows the worm to ingest new food while their body continues to digest the leftover residuals of previously eaten food. Quite similar to when you eat beans and then you start... Uh, right, um... <laughs> Nematodes also have another feature, a pseudo -selum. Uh, This is a body cavity that lies between the mesoderm and the endoderm. So it's not a true coelom. And what exactly does that imply? Well, a true coelom is a body cavity made entirely of mesodermic lining, which is to say, skeletons or bones. For example, our uh, rib cage provides a coelom for our lungs. Mm -hmm. A pseudo is lined with endoderm on the inside and mesoderm on the outside, so it's not as stable of a cavity as a true coelom is, that is composed entirely out of mesoderm. What does all this nonsense mean for the bloody worm? I'm quite glad you asked, old chap. The pseudo allows the worm to more evenly distribute nutrients and gases that it has ingested throughout its body. And, being fluid-filled, it also acts as the hydrostatic skeleton. I do say brilliant. Ah, finally, one of the nematode's most interesting characteristics is its ability to perform cryptobiosis. Would you care to explain this process? Um, could it possibly be when the nematodes go into a state similar to hibernation, when they are exposed to extreme conditions of dry, hot, or cold environments. Um, 
Yes, it is. Right. They do that to survive those extreme conditions by stopping their regular life processes. Then when environmental conditions are once again favorable, they are capable of returning to life. How, how did, did you... Ah, process of elimination, my dear Watson. You are already covered everything else. Right. The teleprompter doesn't hurt either. What was that? What was what? I uh, thought I... Uh, oh, well, um, I suppose we should move on. Right, you are. Right, you are. So, uh, before we take a look at some live nematodes, let's view some photos, shall we? Cue the photos, chaps. Um, well, that's quite interesting. Don't have much to add. Next. <laughs> um, I uh, do you believe we'll be moving on now. I must concur. So we'll be looking at. Two specific examples of live nematodes, both of which are parasitic, meaning they survive by living off of a, but uh, infecting a host organism. But you are. They're also free living nematodes, but they're not as common or as interesting as the parasitic ones. First up, we have the guinea worm. Is this right? Uh, yes, I believe so. Why? Well, it's just that this looks nothing like a guinea worm. You mean, you mean a guinea pig. A guinea pig. Pig, it looks like a... No, it's named that because Europeans saw the disease that results from the worm's infection on the Guinea coast of West Africa during the 17th century. Ah, so it's named after a location, not the adorable rodent. Yes. Well, let's get started, shall we? Help yourself to some tea, lad. It has no bloody appendages, you plot. Uh, right, right you are. Anyways, as you saw previously in those lovely photos, this is the guinea worm. It begins on, life by living in copepods, which are nearly microscopic shrimp-like creatures that live in water. And when you drink the water with the infected copepods in it, you, in turn, become, infect become infected. The mother worm will then travel throughout your body, and then she will cause an open wound on your skin, in which she will lay her eggs in hope that the infected human will wash the wound in water so that her eggs will find their way back to their original copepod host. Then, if we ingest the water with the infected copepods in it, the whole ruddy process starts so What are you doing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. My father was a well-known worm whisperer. It runs in the family. Right. In conclusion, don't drink water, kids. No, no, no. Just contaminated water yes. out of streams and water. such. Water. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I, uh, uh, I uh, suppose we'll be moving on then. Right, oh, next up we've got Trigonella spiralis. Ah, the Hi guys. pork worm. N no, the Trigonella spiralis. Uh, oh, no. Pork worm is just a nickname since this. Parasitic nematode is oftentimes found in undercooked pork. My nickname is Porky. I, 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 I had pork last, last week. Right, the uh, symptoms begin initially with uh, nausea and diarrhea. Excuse me. Oh. And then the infected host begins experiencing extreme muscle pains. Uh. Difficulty breathing, weakening of pulse, and weakening of blood pressure. 
Oh, and not to mention several nervous disorders. Finally, it leads to death by heart failure, kidney complications, or respiratory issues. Quite painful, really. <laughs> well, uh, this pretty much wraps up today's installment of fascinating phylums on nematodes. I do say, old chap, are you quite all right? Uh, probably sleeping on the job, as usual. Uh, next week's episode will cover annelids, and be sure to tune in We, hmm. It's not breathing. Well, at least I'll be here due to my uh, co-host's most unfortunate demise. And on that bombshell, we'll end. Good night, everybody. But wait! Check out our new rap! Oh. Nematodes and roundworms, they're the best. They bring new weapons to the evolution quest. They have to seem seems weird. They twist and seal Mr. Ryan like a glove on a fist. However, they're not a true seam type, so stop right there, get rid of your hype. The message turns only on one side, but in evolution they have some pride. The soup sea lumsly, the sea love maids are that they're on to Heart sack skeleton, flu cavity, it supports the worm and gives a rigidity. Complete diet, subtract, oh yay, it's cool cause food just goes one way. Parasites, they aren't all that fine, they get dead penalty because of their crime. They infect your intestines and your muscles too, tricking all the pinworms, skinny worms, ew. That's all for now, I hope you have some fun, I know I did now, I gotta run. Oh yeah.